Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday. I am profoundly excited and admittedly a little nervous for our guest today. We have Leanne Grillet. She is the Senior Director of Outreach at APH and a professor at Florida State University. One of my professors, in fact. Leanne taught me Nemeth, the abacus. We did a lot of stuff about just kind of planning for TVI life, and I am thrilled to have you on today. Well, thank you so much. I am really happy to be with you, Alex. Thank you. And I also stand you are also now a doctoral candidate. I am. Okay, so. I have taken the long road in doing a class this semester, and I have finally hit the stage of working on my dissertation. And if I'm not mistaken, that dissertation is about one of these, the abacus. It is about the abacus and really about the professional development so that teachers feel confident in teaching the abacus to their students. All right. Well, that is our topic of conversation today, the abacus. So can you first just tell the folks at home, what is an abacus? <laughs> an abacus is an ancient counting tool. And the abacus that people probably think of immediately is a 10 bead, 10 column abacus where you can count up to 100. They often went vertically across and you saw them in elementary, preschool, kindergarten classrooms many times rainbow colored. That's not the abacus I'm talking about. I'm talking about an abacus that has specific beads and has specific methods for using uh, uh, complementary numbers to understand and compute not only addition, subtraction, but multiplication, division. It can do square roots. It can do complex, you can do fractions. There's all sorts of things you can do on the abacus, but people don't necessarily think about it that way. Because in America, we traditionally think of that uh, preschool abacus. So the abaci that we have available actually at APH, so sometimes you can find them other places. Uh, we have beginning ab abacus or abaci uh, that just has uh, nine beads in each column. So not 10, nine beads in each column and two columns. This is the beginner. While it's no longer available, it is out there. People still have these. Uh, what we moved to with recommendation from teachers is to the expanded beginner abacus, which is three columns of nine beads. If you think about it, the only numbers that you can hold in one column are the numbers zero through nine. So having a 10th bead in one column makes absolutely no sense. We don't write a 10 that way. We write a 10 by putting a one in the second column or the tens column and a zero in the ones column. And so this really matches our numbering system, our decimal system well. And these can be used to add, subtract. They can even be used to multiply and divide, though I will suggest something else if you're gonna go that far. <laughs> the other nice thing about it is one-to-one -one correspondence, that beginning of learning numbers and understanding what they mean. Also, these don't get lost, meaning they're all stuck on that wire bead. They're not gonna pop off and roll around on a student's desk. Uh, it has a felt backing, so once the bead is moved, it takes a little bit of work to move it again, which is good when our students are trying to feel where they are on the abacus. But again, you don't lose these. They're not counting bears that get stuck all over the place. They have a specific space and specific column. So we're not trying to organize columns in a, in a virtual vast realm of space. This is really set. So there's the plus four. Now the Kramer abacus, uh, built by Kramer is the one that has one bead on a top of each and then a separation bar and then four beads below. And then there's a, a way that you calculate that top bead is worth five and so on. But this goes all up all the way up to trillions. And if you put two abaci together, it goes even further. So this is kind of the traditional abacus that's been around since the 1950s. And so again, felt backing beads are a little bit harder to move. If your beads are easy to move, you need a new abacus. <laughs> One last abacus. We also have the uh, large abacus, which is the Kramer abacus. It's just bigger. bigger. Great for students who have a hard time manipulating beads that they can't feel as well. And some advantageously blind adults find this a little bit easier. I have also found this helpful for teaching and then bringing it down to the student level on the Kramer abacus. So that's that's really what it what an abacus is. It's for counting, but it's for doing, you can do complex math if you learn how. The easiest way I've explained it to like classroom teachers is instead of our kids handwriting out their math problem, this is them handwriting out their math problem. And of course there is Nemeth to do that, but to do the actual computational step, it can all belong on there. 
It is. There's nothing wrong with learning the the paper pencil algorithms. And of course, our students who are Braille readers do that paper pencil algorithm on a Braille writer. So it's like saying doing, oh, go use a typewriter or a computer keyboard to try to do your um, multiplication of four digits times two digits. And, and if I even told you to do that on your, your computer right now, you're going to go, yeah, right. Mm -mm, not doing it because it's hard. It's similar, but there's an importance that should still be learned. This just speeds the process up after the student has the understanding of what that means. This, there's, this is the paper, pencil, and the quick method for your student to complete these. And don't think that just because the student is um, uh, blind that they're the only ones that should use this. Sighted students, especially in other countries, use this. So your low vision student, this is a great way to help hold those numbers in the same, same column. How many students have you known that kind of move over a column on accident? Mm -hmm. Use the abacus. Nothing wrong with it. All right. So we, we have kind of already touched on this as we were talking about this, but if, if it's your doctoral thesis, you must be pretty passionate about about the use of the abacus. So could you explain to us why, why are you so passionate about it? So I think as a whole, we've started to understand that that math is a part of the STEM curriculum, the science, technology, engineering, and math. And many people kind of focus on the ST and E, especially if there's a fear of math. And for students with vision loss, math can actually be a challenging concept to, to grasp. Uh, it, it, the abacus actually introduces our students to early math concepts and number operations where they can get that one-to-one -one correspondence and true understanding of number sense, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It builds something called procedural fluency. We, many times when we talk about fluency, people think of reading, like you can read fluently, put it into math, we can, we can flexibly and accurately and efficiently determine our computations, our answers. And that's what the abacus does. It gives them that fluency. You don't, well, you can have fluency with a braille writer. It is a labor intensive fluency. It just isn't as fluent. So this tool actually helps our students with vision loss gain that procedural fluency and work through those problems. And it's accessible and it's a manipulative. And again, I say vision loss, it doesn't matter what their loss of vision is. Even if it's low vision, this works as well. So that, that's really that's really it. Um, historically, we know that our uh, people with vision loss weren't perceived as individuals to have an interest in science, technology, or math, nor even an, an inclination to pursue those. But at APH, we actually know this is counterintuitive yeah. uh, to what we experience with this community. So that's why we are having some of this focus on the abacus and learning it. Excellent. Uh, well, something you said kind of brought me back to your class, actually, when you mentioned the, the fear of math, you talked about how as teachers, you because uh, we you you had us raise our hand and say, who doesn't like math? I raised my hand when you asked that. And she, you said we could never tell our kids that because then that'll start building the idea that math is a thing that you cannot like, that that's an option in your life. And that's not what we want our kids to learn. So I just yeah. wanted that. That really brought me back to Florida State. All right. So you can find it hard or challenging. There's nothing wrong with hard and challenging. We go through those things in life, but conquering that is a really important piece. And if we start young, some of that love is gained from young use in math. And our students are not exposed to numbers, especially our students with extremely low or no vision, because we are surrounded by numbers visually, on a clock, on the microwave, uh, punching in a, a temperature on a stove, on an iron, if you still iron, even uh, the, the numbers throughout a grocery store. Just think of how many numbers you see, and our students mm -hmm. don't get this exposure. So we have to artificially add it to their environment. Now, there are a lot of challenges around the country for our other things we focus on, we have Cane Quest for Cane Skills. We have the Braille Challenge for Braille. I understand you're spearheading an initiative for something like that with the Abacus. 
I am. So I've had this little brainchild in my head for a number of years now that I wish there was a math competition similar to the Braille Challenge. I have loved what the Braille Institute has done in motivating students to learn Braille and to build their skills. And I wanted to be able to have something similar. So APH uh, wrote a, a proposal for a grant to the Simons Foundation uh, to the Science Sandbox and, and, and asked. And we asked actually for a variety of things, but the thing they were most interested in was the few sentences I wrote about this, this little idea of the Abacus B. And they loved it so much, they said, we want to support you in doing this. And so we're doing a pilot program this year for an abacus bee, which is an abacus competition. So many people think of uh, bee as a spelling bee. Uh, bee really just means a, a competition. So don't, okay. don't think that we're asking you to spell math. This is, yeah. this is truly uh, solving addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems with reading them in either large print, mammoth braille, or UEB braille, as well as an auditory competition, just listening and solving it. And while we call it the Abacus B, and the Abacus is an important piece for our students to use, there is nothing against mental math. And many people who become skilled in the Abacus actually create um, physical and mental pictures of an Abacus and actually complete math problems mentally. So uh, there's no requirement that you use an abacus, but you may not use any type of paper pencil method. You, know, you okay. cannot pull out the braille writer and try to solve the problem. Uh -huh. You can't pull out a pencil and paper and try to solve the problem. You need to do either the abacus or mental math to be able to do it. Okay, that also reminds me of being blindfolded in your classroom and solving math problems on my abacus. That really takes me back. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for coming on today and telling us all about this wonderful mathematical tool. I have one last question for you, and that is, what is your favorite part of your job? Uh, my favorite part of my job is actually uh, providing professional development, teaching and training, and working with vision professionals, but also parents or paraprofessionals or those people who surround the student, whatever age that student is. Even if they're a 40 year old, I want to surround them. I want to provide that professional development to those teachers and people so that they feel they're giving that uh, consumer or student the best opportunity for a successful career in life. So watching that professional development happen and someone taking away knowledge that they feel they can make a difference in someone's life. All right, that is an excellent answer. Well, thank you again so much <laughs> for being on this episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday with us, Liam. Thank you so much. And if you are not a part of the Abacus B this year in our pilot program, because there's only a few locations, stay tuned, come join us next year. All right, well, I look forward to seeing it all across the country, and I look forward to seeing everybody at home on our next episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday. Uh, we are now on our every other week schedule, so I won't see you next week, but the week after that. Uh, have a lovely rest of your week, and we look forward to seeing you next time.